Hi guys, what's up? Welcome back to Beginner's Makeup Week. Today is episode number three, and today's topic is how to blend your eyeshadow like a pro. So in today's video, I'm going to take you through the entire process of blending your eyeshadows, which colors you need to pick out, how to choose your color story, and all of that, and all tips and techniques, and also the brushes you should use, and how you can replace and reuse brushes or use your fingers, and all of that. It's everything that you need to know about the eyeshadow game, and I've broken it down into super simple steps. So I hope you guys enjoy and learn a lot from this video. I hope you're like enjoying the beginners makeup week. And if you're new to my channel and you're just watching this video or you're watching the videos that you've not subscribed already, I'm Sara. I make beauty videos and I'm currently doing a beginner's makeup week where I'm teaching all the basic makeup skills in one video each. So if you've not subscribed to my channel already, all you have to do is go down there. Click on that big red subscribe button and the bell icon right next to it, and you can subscribe for free to my channel. So please don't forget to do that, and then you can keep on watching. Okay, so let's get started on blending this eyeshadow to perfection. Your step number one to making your eyeshadows really pop is to prime your eyelids. Now to do that, you can simply use a concealer. The main purpose of doing this step is that the hyperpigmentation and the color of your natural eyelids and all the veins that you have going on every. Everything can be hidden completely, and then you have like a blank canvas on which your eyeshadow colors can nicely pop and show up. If you directly try to go in with eyeshadow colors on your eyelid, then it won't pop as much as it pops when you apply an eyeshadow primer before. And sometimes people also have oily eyelids, so then all that oil that comes through your eyelids is going to mess your eyeshadow up. So it's better to prime them and create a nice clean canvas. You get eyeshadow primer. Separately, but I simply use my concealer, so that's what we are going to do today. Starting with this Wet n Wild concealer, I'm just going to take a little bit on both my eyelids. You just have to roughly apply them. Now you can take a sponge or simply take your finger and blend this all over your eyelid. So then you can see that whatever natural color of my eyelids was there is completely covered. Make sure you go all the way on all the space that you have on your eyelid, and also in the process you can carve out your brows. If you have very uh, misshapen brows, you can carve them out. Okay, so step number one all complete. Now step number two is to set this concealer or primer in place because you have applied some cream product and you have creases on your eyes. If you don't set it, it's going to crease and then make a big mess and go into your fine lines of your eyes. So you don't want that to happen. So for that, you can use the same powder which you use on your face, a loose setting powder or a compact powder, whatever that you have. So I'm using this mini so mini pony loose powder. It's simply a loose powder just take this and set it you can use a beauty sponge you can use your fingers you can use a brush you can use whatever you want in these videos what you need to keep in mind is more the technique than what I'm using and what products I'm using you need to more so pay attention to the technique if you get the technique right you can work with whatever you have all right so for today's tutorial I'm using the Nykaa just wing kit eyeshadow palette I really like these palettes because they are very cute and small travel friendly also come with 12 shades and all of them blend really really well why is this not opening hmm Okay, so since this is beginner's week, I want to do an eye look which is very versatile and goes with every single eye shape and it's also very very simple to do. All you have to do is keep in mind 5 types of shades that you need to choose. First shade you need is a transition shade, second a crease shade, third an outer corner shade, fourth a lid shade and fifth a brow bone highlight. So these are like the 5 shades you need to keep in mind and I'm going to show you how to pick a color for each shade and then how to blend it into your eyes. So starting with the first shade that you need to go in for is your transition shade. Now this is simply to lay like a base to your eye look. It will go somewhere in between your crease and your lid. You can roughly put it on your crease as well as on your lid. This is a color you will again and again reach out to to make sure that the rest of the colors are blended in well into each other. 
So the transition color should be somewhere on the lighter side. You should not pick something which, which is very dark, which will be difficult to blend and while blending it, you'll be making a big mess. So choose a lighter transition shade for your eye look. So if you're going in with pinks, the lightest of the pink. If you're going in with browns, the lightest of the browns. If you're going in with yellows, the lightest of the yellow. You get the logic, you have to choose the lightest color as your transition color. Now in this palette, per se, there is more scope for pink eye looks than there is for brown eye look. But I've never done a brown eye look in this palette, so I decided to do that today. So if you can see in the brown family, there is only one dark brown and one like a little lighter brown, but nothing which can be used as a crease shade. So somewhere in this warm tone family, a lighter color that I can use is maybe this pink shade or this pink shade, like somewhere in these two warm families, which I can use to again and again go in and blend my eyeshadows in place. So I think I'm more comfortable using this color since it has more of a warmer, mauve undertone. So taking a fluffy brush, this is the pack 311. Once again, you don't have to use the same brushes. They just have to serve the same purpose. So if you have a fluffy brush like this, dunk your brush into your eyeshadow and then tap off the excess. This is very important. You don't need too much product on your eyes. Less is more. Now hold your eyeshadow brush towards the last one fourth. Don't hold it very close and go on your eyes. Hold it as far as possible so you have a free hand when you're blending your eyeshadows in. Now to place this color, you will go directly in your crease and go in wind swiper motion. Forward, backward, forward, backward. That's the motion that you want to go in. If your eyeshadows are not that pigmented, you might have to go a couple of times. You want to make sure that you have color on your eyes. Keep going in windswiper motions. Your main focus is your crease. Now, if you can't find your crease like, like me, if you're a monolid, I have just one monolid. I don't have much space on my eyes. So you can raise your eyebrows and then like find your crease and then go in over there. By doing wind swiper motions, you're making sure lesser product is nicely blended all the way in your crease. Now on the outer side, to not have a harsh edge, just go in circular motions and buff the color on the outside so that there is no excess product collected over here. Look, while doing this, you have to go in a very, like, don't apply too much pressure. You don't have to press on your eyelids. You just have to go in with a very, very light hand in wind swiper motion that's why i said that hold your brush far away because the closer you hold it the more pressure you will apply on your eyes so the farther you hold it your hand will flow more freely all right so now that we've laid our transition shade down the next color we will dive into is our crease shade now for crease shade you can go in a shade darker than your transition color but once again not the darkest shade that you're going to use the darkest shade will go in your outer corner so your crease shade will be somewhere in between your transition shade and your outer corner color a middle shade like not too dark and not too light so now from this particular palette i will go in for this particular brown shade because between these two brown colors this is a lighter brown and uh, it's a little darker than the pink shade that I've laid in my transition so it's the perfect crease shade for my eye look for applying my crease color I'm using this pack brush this is the pack 122 brush it is fluffy at the base but it has a more pointed and tapered end if you don't have a brush similar to this you can use the same brush you've used for your transition color the fluffy brush just make sure you're going in more precise areas so instead of using the brush itna dur se you can go a little closer and give a more precise application to your crease color so crease color is exactly what the name says it goes in your crease and it will be somewhere a little lower than your transition shade so i will go like somewhere around here with my crease color let me take a little bit of shade on my eyeshadow brush tap off the excess always tap off the excess the lesser you use the less mistakes you will make so crease color will also go in wind swiper motions it will overlap the transition shade but give more definition to your crease that's the whole purpose To 
with the outer corner just going circular motion so you're like blending the shadows of it and then with your fingers you can just soften the edges okay so if you can appreciate the difference between both the eyes this is looking more almond shaped and more tapered because it has another color down in your crease your crease is now more defined as compared to this which is mo looking more softer and more muted make sure you do this and flick the out the shade towards the outside so that it's giving you a nice soft end most of the times i see that beginners have a problem when it comes to giving a clear definition to your eye shadow look it looks very collected near your eyes and then there's no soft uh, transition between the eye look and your face area so give a nice soft flick till you feel like the colors are nicely blended into your face to the point that you can't see that stark difference Okay so now that two colors are down we'll move on to the third shade which is the outer corner shade and this is going to be the darkest shade that you're going to put on your eyes so from the color story and the color family that you're going for choose the darkest color it may be a dark brown a dark black a dark pink or whatever it is the color story that you're going for so in this palette very evidently the darkest brown is this color and it belongs to the color story that i'm going for so i'm going to go and choose this dark brown for my outer corner once again for outer corner you can use the same brush you used in your crease you can use the same brush you used for transition shade you don't have to keep switching brushes if you don't have that many brushes but if you want like a proper proper outer corner brush then you should choose something like this which is more dense in its shape so something like this brush which is the pack 203 brush it's more rounded towards the tip it has more fibers collected in one area so with this i can precisely go in my outer corner now once again this is more precise application so you will not hold the brush itna dur se and go you will come much closer and go in properly in your outer corner for this particular shade so taking the dark brown color on the brush tapping off all the excess because this is a dark shade you need to be very careful that you can make mistakes over here so take very very less and build up on it now over here on your eyelid at the end of your lash line is where you will buff the outer corner shade on your eye this is basically to add more definition and more smokiness to your eye if you want to skip the shade you can definitely go ahead and do that but it will add more definition to your entire eye look so i always make sure that i do it so once you place the color just go into circular motions now you don't want to be blending this entirely in your crease so you're not going to go in wind swiper motions anymore you're just going to go in circular motions in that same very area just go in circular motions you're just adding depth to your eye look and then just flick out all the excess product so that it's nicely transitioned into your face makeup with outer corner i barely dunk my brush twice into the palette at least with crease shade and transition shade i was going in so many times flick it towards the inside and flick it towards the outside but make sure the color is concentrated only on your outer corner Okay now I'm happy with how my outer corner blend looks. I really like how all the colors are blended in. If I want anything to be softened, you can simply go in with your finger and do that. All right. So I just feel like this has gone a little outside to the same sponge with which I did my whole base makeup. I'm just going to make sure that I put a little bit of foundation or powder. I'm not applying any new product. Wo jo bhi sponge pe bacha hua hai. I'm just blending the eye shadow in with my face makeup. Okay so here we have it all our three shades really nicely blended into our eyes now the main color which will go on your lid is your lid shade now so far we've used only matte shades because matte shades go really well in your crease they all blend really well into each other i prefer to use matte shades all over my eye and the lid shade will be that sparkle that you need on your eye look so you can go again with a matte shade on your lid it's totally up to you with eye shadow you can play around as much as you want uh, but since i want to go in with a sparkly lid i'm going to choose this gold color in the palette goes very well with the color story that i'm going for 
it's a nice sparkly color and for my lid shade i like to use my fingers a shimmer shade always performs really well when you apply it with your finger because the natural oils of your palm merge into that shadow and make it sparkle even more you can use a brush if you want you can use a flat top brush for that so you have to place this precisely on your lid now i don't have so much lid space if you have great for you i don't have that much so i just make sure i'm covering like two thirds of my lid with this shadow starting to lay it on the middle of my eyeball and then going in inside because i have long nails it makes it difficult but like you can see it's nicely covered it's very sparkly and nice and we've got a nice blend of eye shadow happening Now if you want to use a brush like I said you will use a flat top brush like this this is the pack 310 so just for touch up I'm going to go in with the brush You want to go all the way from the inner part of your eye to like the two thirds of your eye now there are different eye looks there's a halo eye where you just concentrated in the middle there's a cut crease and all of that but this is something very simple that goes with almost all eye shapes and that's why I wanted to do this for today's look and it's something i do most of the time it's super simple and once you get a hold of it your hands move really fast while doing this all right so now if you can see the blend is a little upper niche of both the eyes and your transition shade has somewhere disappeared in all of this your crease shade has somewhere disappeared in all of this so just to reinforce all the colors back again you can go in with whichever shade you feel has like buffed out you can go in and reapply and adjust but mostly what i like to do is just take my transition shade again or a clean brush like which has absolutely no product on it and just buff it into my crease so all the colors nicely blend into each other so that's what i'm going to do this was the brush that i used the transition shade on i'm just going to buff out any color from it and then just buff it into my crease and my outer corner so that the lid shade and the transition shade meet each other nicely in between the outer corner is nicely blended there are no harsh edges no harsh lines this one step can really make the difference because this will just make sure your eye look is nice and smooth and blended and well blended into each other i feel like this lid shade is not as sparkly as this so i go again with a little bit of the sparkle and reinforce it so you can go ahead give touches wherever you want reinforcing the outer corner shade as well because i feel like it's a little buffed out okay so i'm happy with the blend of the eye shadows this is the main blending portion all complete just four shades which go on your eyelid the transition color crease color a uh, lid color and outer corner color and you're all complete and you have a beautiful eye look that you can wear to any occasion one specific shade that you should keep in mind is the brow bone highlight now for this you can use the same highlighter that you've used on your face or else you can take a nice shimmery color from the palette which is more like a highlight it's more lighter and it has some bling to it so this palette particularly i don't like any color but i will use this which is more of a sheeny pink uh, sort of color which is a nice highlight i guess and i'm taking it on this teeny tiny brush teeny tiny pencil brush uh this is the pack 202 if you don't have this you can use your pinky finger as well and go on your brow bone i will show you one eye with a brush and one eye with the pinky finger so the brow bone highlight the purpose is that if you highlight just this portion of your brow where the arch of your brow is just highlight there don't take it all the way down because then it makes your eye look very droopy uh just highlight this brow portion so like you can see the arch gets highlighted your eyes feel more lifted and you apply the same color to the inner corner as well to make your eyes look more open so i've done this side with a brush so i will do this side with my pinky finger and show you all just place it on the arch of your brow once you've done that with another finger just blend it in Like I said you just need to know the technique the brushes and the colors can all be replaced you can use your hand you can use whatever you have instead of eyeshadow you can use blush bronzer 
anything just need to know the technique more comfortable with this pinky so i will go in with this pinky finger just precisely place it on your inner corner all right so this is the top of the eyelid all complete this is what the eyeshadow blending looks like now we also have the bottom lash line we should not forget that so now to smoke that out first i like to apply kajal or like a something to my waterline so that it nicely looks smoked out so for kajal i'm using the k beauty k by katrina uh, spade kajal Okay, so once I've done that for the lower lash line, you need something like this—a more uh, smaller buffing crease brush. This is the Elf crease brush, so it's more smaller and more buffy on the top. You can't use those big ass brushes on your lower lash line. You need something more defined. So now for your lower lash line, you will use two colors: one your crease shade and one your outer corner shade. Same thing that you used on your. top lid of course if you want to go all out and you're going more punk you can do like a bold lower lash line which is very much in trend like put a purple on your lower lash line or a blue shade if it's on your outfit and you can just you know spark your look out with that but we are not doing that today we are going for something very simple and sober so the same thing the same color that i used in my crease this light brown and then this dark brown so first let's go in with a lighter brown For this, I don't know why I make this weird face, but I do. And you want to buff it nice and free on your lower lash line. Don't worry at all. Just easily buff it. Hold your brush for a dour. Nicely, freely buff it on your lower lash line. Wind swiper motions again. And now this was the crease color. So for the outer corner shade which I use, that is this dark brown color. I will again take it on the same brush and place it more close to my lash line and more on the outer corner. Like the crease shade, I was very free about it and just brushing it on my lower lash line. But with the outer corner darker shade, I will hold the brush more close and I will go very precisely closer to my lash line and just on the outer one third of the lower lash line. So this is what it will look like more smoky on the outside more buffed out on the inside and just flick the excess product okay so this completes the entire eyeshadow blending this is what the eyes look like very nicely blended we just used four colors but there was a lot of technique involved with practice you can just ace these techniques and then your hand will just flow very fast whenever you want to do your makeup so on top of this you can apply eyeliner you can apply mascara i'm just going to apply a little bit of mascara and be right back all right you guys so i added a little bit of eyeliner and mascara and completed the whole eye look there will be tutorials on all of this ahead in the beginners makeup week but this completes the tutorial for how to blend your eyeshadow like a pro eyes are the only portion which is visible through the mask so i think eyeshadow has suddenly gained a lot of importance in the grooming process uh, i hope you guys are enjoying beginners week if you did actually like this video then don't forget to hit the like button and also please don't forget to click on the subscribe subscribe button join this family and the bell icon next to it because there are lot more videos coming for the beginners makeup week i'm going to teach you how to perfect your winged eyeliner how to put on falsies there's a lot more coming i'm so so excited for all the content that's going to come this week and so i will see you tomorrow with a brand new tutorial and a brand new video until then take care stay home stay safe and stay positive bye guys love you all mwah